Zero. Uh, turns out when Tamerlan Tsarnaev went to Russia, he had a third cousin with whom he became tight when he went to Russia who was a prominent Islamist in Dagestan or Dagestan, however you say it. He, his cousin, a guy by the name of Kartashov, Mogamed Kartashov, had founded and become the leader of an organization called the Union of the Just, which was a militant Islamic organization in Dagestan. He spent six months there, became very, very tight uh, with his third cousin, so easy to see. He was already radicalized when he got there, but that simply pushed him over the edge. And they did find a burial place, by the way, for him. Nobody knows where it is. Body of Boston Marathon bombing suspect Tamerlan Sarnayev has been laid to rest somewhere outside Massachusetts. Worcester police said the remains of the 26-year-old have been, quote, entombed. They took his remains sometime before midnight last night from the funeral home where his body had been since Friday. His uncle apparently signed off on the burial site but the location has not been revealed. Four cemeteries and the cities of Cambridge and Boston had told this funeral director, we're not going to take the remains of this guy. Uh, so they said, well, let's bury him at the state prison. But the governor, Deval Patrick, said, no, that ain't going to happen. So they couldn't find a place in a three-state area that even, even would even take this guy. So we have no idea where this guy has been buried. And here's the uh, Religion of Peace update for the day. President Barack Obama appears with a bullseye on his head in a new English language magazine published online, apparently by Islamic militants, Islamic fundamentalists, who also urge Muslims around the world to hack and manipulate American drones. Here's the label on the cover of this uh, magazine, Wanted, Not Dead or Alive, Wanted Dead Only, Barack Obama, mass murderer, reward colon in the hereafter, and Barack Obama is the target of these Muslims. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Paul in Dallas, Texas. Paul, welcome. What's on your mind? Yes, I, I wanted to comment just briefly on, uh, I think, the John Stewart clip when he was saying, I don't think we can share your outrage when we not know what you're saying is true. I don't watch a daily show. Uh, so I assume that was in reference to the uh, people that are now testifying. Uh, yeah, and I'm not familiar with that clip that you're talking about either. I'm not familiar with that audio portion. But anyway, go ahead and finish right, your thought. Anyway, my, my point is, if you want to play, who do you want to believe? Uh, do you want to believe a president and his administration that was at the tail end of a very, very tight election and a secretary of state who's hoping to be president in 2016? Or do you want to believe active employees who are now risking their mm -hmm. careers and their jobs just to try to create a little, uh, you know, political discomfort. They'd al they've already seen what's happened to other whistleblowers. I strongly suggest the obvious that someone only comes forward under those circumstances when their conscience is just burning beyond mm -hmm. belief that there's lies being told and they want it to get out to be the truth, not like, oh, well, let me just make up something here to cause a little trouble for the president, you know, while I still am trying to keep my job and the person who's going to be president for the next three years. Well, you know, I think that's an excellent observation, Paul. You look at the people who had an incentive to lie here. Well, President Obama was two months away from an election. He had all sorts of reasons to lie. Uh, he wants to provide cover for Islam. Hillary Clinton, same thing. She's got presidential aspirations. She's got motivations to lie. You know, and you're right, Paul. These people have no reason to lie. They've been demoted uh, they know there's tremendous risk involved in this, so they got no reason to lie. You know, their testimony to me had the ring of truth. And it's interesting to me, Paul, one last observation, and thank you for calling. But you know, it's interesting to me that what the liberals are saying is not that we disagree with what they said. It's not that there's something faulty with their testimony. They say, oh, we've heard that before. It's nothing new here. Let's move along. That's all. That's ancient history. So they're they're not saying it's not true. They're saying, hey, that's ancient history. Let's Let's move on. Let's go to Aaron in Smithville, uh, Georgia. Aaron, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Hey. Uh, I, I had a question, but I listened to one of your clips right before the news break, and uh, I believe news and history was made yesterday. Uh, did you catch the, the Democratic committee member that 
place the blame on the Benghazi incident on sequestration. I mean, he basically yeah. went into yeah. a monologue explaining yeah. how budget cuts and this, that, and other led up to the incident in Benghazi. Well, you talk. Yeah, you talk about irrationality. I mean, because the sequester, the, this attack happened in September, and the sequestration didn't go into effect until this spring. So, I mean, you got to go through some kind of time machine to make that yeah. hypothesis work. That's great. Yeah. All right. Question: How do you how do you get the information out if the news media refuses to cover it? Well, that's what that's what AFR talk is about, Aaron. I mean. That, that the reality is, if it's not for conservative talk radio and conservative um, media outlets and websites, this information would be buried. I mean, if people were dependent on the major um, m- mainstream media outlets for their news, they wouldn't even know that there was anything going on here. They would think that uh, the only thing that was happening in the world is Jody Arias being found guilty of murder and this these Cleveland guys and what they did to these women for 10 years. That's all they would know it even happened. So that's, uh, Aaron, that's why it's so important that we keep this voice, AFR Talk, and outlets like Fox News. They were the only network that covered the hearings yesterday. I mean, CNN cut in and cut out a little bit. MSNBC, nothing. Major networks, nothing. Uh, No live coverage of these hearings. So it's going to have to be up to us, Aaron, to just keep declaring the truth, keep proclaiming it, keep disseminating it. You know, I believe what Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, one word of truth outweighs the whole world in the end. We and the truth will prevail. Well, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate the call. Last call of the day. Let's go to Candace in Burlington, New Jersey. Uh, Candace, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hi. I just wanted to comment on the homosexuality talk that you guys were referring to yes, uh, ma'am. earlier. Uh huh. Um, it just it pains me to hear how how they're how homosexuals are talked about because I understand that we're supposed to stand for our rights, but we're mostly our main priority should be showing other people Christ's love, like showing these people love. And I understand that if they're in the body of Christ, of Christ to point out any, any way that they may be straying, but I don't think that we should, our main priority should be, well, we need to fight for our rights. And also making blanket statements that all, all, homosexual, all homosexuals are, you know, hate Christians and are just trying to keep us in our walls of our church and, and hate the Bible because it's a stumbling block. Well, no, no, and, and Candace, uh, I'm out. Of, I'm getting close on time here, but I've never said all homosexuals believe it. I said homosexual activists, the people that are leading the homosexual movement. And one last question, Candace. I've only got about 20 seconds here, but if you had a friend, somebody you loved, and they were they were injecting drugs into their veins, what would you tell them if you had a chance? Well, of course, I would tell them that this isn't the healthy choice. Okay, there you go. Uh, That's exactly our message to homosexuals. So that's how you show love, Candace. You love that person. You don't want to see them destroyed. We love homosexuals. We know what homosexuality does to human health. We don't want to see them destroy themselves. We love them too much to let them destroy their lives and their health without some word of appeal. Well, thanks, Candace. I appreciate that. Well, that's it for today. Here's a blessing from the Word of God for the rest of your day. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement... Give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you tomorrow. The views and opinions expressed in this.